Joining us this morning on Inside Track is Chris Kotowski. Chris, Egan Jones came out with not one, but two very negative articles on Jeffries. And following number two, you finally threw the white flag and said, enough is enough. Why? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a dog in this hunt, as it were. I'm not recommending Jeffries. And a month ago, I didn't know who Egan Jones was. But there were such epic errors of fact in this second report that I, I thought somebody just needed to call it out. And for example, they said, quote, uh, Jeffries has seen a 37.8% decline in its revenues the last couple of years. Well, you know, aside from the false precision of drilling down to the nearest tenth of a percent, the number is just flat out wrong by a country but, mile. Who is Egan Jones and why are they putting out a shoddy report that's causing this kind of ripple in the market? You know, I'm not sure. I, I don't know them very well and I'm not sure Does exactly. The I don't think the market knew them up, up until a month ago. Uh, and But, you know, the fact that this kind of deeply flawed work can get the kind of media traction that it has been. It just indicates to me that we're living through something that is kind of like the inverse of the internet bubble. You know, back in the late 90s, there was a reason why tech stocks did well, because everybody wanted to get online, and then they, then they wanted it wireless, and then they wanted bigger, brighter screens. So there was a reason why tech stocks did well for a couple of years running. But by 2000, it got to the point where people were just buying tech stocks no matter what the valuation or, or what the project. And now they're shorting banks um, just because shorting banks has worked for five years in a row. So it's, it's people have this mentality of short a bank, get a check. But Chris, <laughs> what I want to know is why spring to Jeffrey's defense? It's not like you don't disagree with what your fellow analysts say on a daily basis, but this is a little unusual. I don't see analysts doing this very much. Well, I don't make a habit of it. I usually don't like to respond to what other analysts uh, say. I think let the best ideas win. But, you know, when you see these kinds of glaring errors of fact, somebody's got to call Is that because it's a buying opportunity? You believe that now because this the so-called speculation or rumor mongering or whatever you want to call it is overdone? You, well, you want to encourage people to take a second look at Jefferies? I think, look, I think Jefferies is a fine company. I think it's conservatively managed. I think it's, it's conservatively leveraged compared to any other uh, fixed income trader historically. And do you think there could be some foul play on the part of Egan Jones? Could there be investors looking to short Jefferies, looking to make money before the end of the year, and Egan Jones was the tool to make that happen? Well, you know, I, I don't know what their motivation is. I don't know the people. But I can just tell you that uh, they came together and they just had, like, like I said, epic errors of fact in here. Uh, they said they had a 0.0% operating margin. Again, that false precision. <laughs> and it turns out, of course, to be more like 18 uh, on the plus side. Ultimately, though, is Jeffries out of the woods? That's what the investor wants to know, Chris. Do you think the storm has passed and maybe this misinformation, disinformation, whatever it is, is behind the firm? Well, I think this particular bout of, of uh, you know, this particular attack has probably been discredited. But I think what is underlying it, it, it shows you the fault or the errors of having a two-tiered regulatory system where Goldman and Morgan Stanley our bank holding companies regulated by the Fed, and people kind of trust the Fed for having good regulators there. And then the small guys, they, they are all basically regulated by the uh, SEC and the CFTC, which are really not very effective regulators or examiners uh, historically. Well, we'll see if the confidence can get back into Jeffries. Indeed. Alrighty. Chris, good to see you this morning. Thank Thanks you. for coming to the Inside Track. Chris Kotowski of Oppenheimer. Uh, a a strong defense, shall we say, of Jeffries.